Hello and welcome to the Matthews Friends cooking channel. We've had many inquiries from you concerning sweeteners and uh, we have a very special guest here today. It's Sue Wood who is the Matthews Friends dietitian and uh, she will be answering some of the questions that have been asked. Hello Sue. Hello Mo, nice to see you. And you. We've got a range of sweeteners here as you can see. For instance, this group here. What do you think? So these granulated sweeteners, which we find in all our supermarkets really, really easily, um, actually have got some carbohydrate in them. Oh, right. So if you're just trying to cut down your sugars to lose a bit of weight, mm. uh, or maybe you're diabetic, just wanting to have a little bit of something mm. uh, sweet, then they may be okay, but they're not really the sort of thing we tend to recommend on ketogenic diets, mm. because you would still have to count elements of that carbohydrate. So you'd be mm. using up some of your carbohydrate exchange for them. Yes, and that could be quite difficult. Couldn't yes, it? because yes. often carbohydrate is mm. really limited. Mm. So you don't want to be spending your allowance on something that you don't have to. No. So we tend not to use these standard granulated sweeteners that have got maltodextrin, which is a carbohydrate that we can use. And they've got an extra sort of artificial sweetener added into them to make them extra sweet. Right. So we won't use those. But what we tend to use is more of the just the more pure artificial sweeteners, something like this, which is a saccharin based product. Um, so you've either got tableted forms or you've got liquid products and sometimes liquids obviously are much easier to use in baking. You know, you can sort of squeeze a little bit in. Yes. What do yes, you do when you're using tablets? Do you ever use tablets? And um, I don't, no, no. but I, I can imagine that if you're travelling and yes. um, you could, yeah. uh, they would be useful. Do you find that you use the liquid quite a bit in your in I, baking products? Yes, we do. At Matthew's Friends, yeah. um, we do use a lot of home seaters, yeah. yes. It's, uh, so that is quite a convenient yeah. one. And I know we can easily, it is a liquid. It's, an, it's probably the easiest liquid we can access. So we do tend to use that. Yes. So that's saccharin based. Yes. We've got some other products here, um, which are based on a different form of sweetener. And these are actually powdered ones as well. Mm. The difference uh, between these powders and these other powders here is that they are an intense sweetener, which they are stevia, which is derived from the stevia plant. So that's natural. And it, that's, it's a natural, yeah. but again, it's if you're using just stevia leaves in your food, you could say, well, you're just add, adding natural leaves into your food. Obviously, this is an extract, mm. um, but it is a very intense sweetener. And what they've done is actually sprayed it onto a sugar alcohol, erythritol. Right. Now erythritol is something that we can actually break down and actually use some calories from, but it doesn't, we, we can't use much of it. So calorie for calorie it's less than a, a normal carbohydrate containing food. Um, and then it's got this additional extra sweetening added on top to make it really sweet. So we do use relatively smaller amount, quite sweet and it won't have a massive impact on blood glucose levels. Oh, right, yeah. So that's why it can be incorporated. Yeah. But like any sweetening agents, it's used for treat items. You know, we're using it for special items. Yes. It's not something that you're going to have fast amounts day to day. The other thing to note about these sugar alcohols like this erythritol, or maltitol, or sorbitol, or anything like that, mm. is it can affect our tummies. Ah, uh, yes, that's what we've been asked a lot. You know? Yeah, so yeah. if yes. you tart, and you, you know, if you, you see those um, sweets and things on the low carb mm. online or in the shops, uh, which have got these oils, polyols, sorbitol or, um, or uh, erythritol, this sort of thing, and they, if you have quite a bit of that, mm. um, it, is, it may upset your tummy, yeah. and you may get tummy ache cramps, might get diarrhea, wind, Mm. Um, and so it's a good idea. Everybody's individual. Some people have probably got cast iron tummies, isn't it? No, and it was not anything. But yeah. some people are really sensitive, and a small amount of these sugar alcohols will have an effect. So it's about it's about getting to know what you can tolerate. And mm. really, they are these are still they're luxury items. You know, they're mm. they're just to be added into treats. They're not yes. the basis of of your da daily diet. You know, they're just yeah. to enhance things a little bit. Yes. So these can be, so stevia is quite a useful one that's being used quite a lot at the moment yeah. um, and 
uh, it does also come in, in different forms. I don't think we can get liquid stevia very easily in this country, but I know in America they can. Yes. Um, but you found this product quite useful for... This one I mm -hmm. found uh, wonderful because uh, these granules don't dissolve quite as ah, easily. Right. And this has been taken back to a powder and it, it, it's very much like icing sugar. Ah, I mean, if, really if you fine. mixed some icing sugar and some of that, you would detect a difference. Right. But, you know, when you've got a child that's craving a cupcake with a bit of glass, with a bit of glass icing, icing yes. on top, then yeah. this is, because you only really needed handy. a little bit of it with water oh, and, uh, yes. and it makes a nice mm. glacé icing. Mm. And it also mixes in really, really well into cream or butter to make a buttercream. Mm. Um, whereas so if special you special occasions, that's yeah, brilliant then, isn't it? It's it is, really good. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. I've found that when I tried to make um, a buttercream with butter, with a granule, it stayed mm. Mm, crunchy. And yeah. you, so you need that nice mouthfeel with mm. buttercream, yeah. don't you? And so you do get a lovely yeah. smooth. Oh, lovely. Yeah, it's it, it's very useful, and I'm very pleased that oh, we've got it. That's good. <laughs> so what now? We've got some other things at the end there. Are they are they elements that you use quite a bit in? Ketogenic recipes. Yes, we, we use these for sweetening milkshakes. Mm. Oh yes, we yeah. yeah and you could, you know, if, if you need to get some fat in, and uh, double cream, some water, some of this, mm. or the water just to loosen the cream a bit, mm. you know, and uh, some of this in, and you've got and a it really instant it. milkshake, and you don't need a lot. Yeah. And of yeah. course, um, Da Vinci, particularly, that comes in lots of flavours. Yeah, that's very useful. Yes. Now I think that Da Vinci products they're sweetened with sucralose. And this is another sweetener that's, that's come about um, in recent years. Um, it's derived from sucrose, so derived from sugar, but it's actually been modified so that we can't use it. And so again, it's an element, it's an artificial sweetener that we should use just in moderate amounts. We, you know, we should use it just, again, as a luxury product. It's not our fundamental basic of our diet, mm. um, but it really can be useful to enhance you know, enhance things. Yeah. So um, now the Da Vinci's is just sucralose. The, um, I think this chocolate sauce, a chocolate syrup, again, has got sucralose in it. Um, again, is a really useful product for adding in to items. This, this, this product actually, I think is different and this has actually got a sugar alcohol in it. So um, that product, again, using small amounts probably will have, and I know we like to put it on pancakes that and things like that. That is wonderful. For pancakes, um, yes, so these sort of elements, but yeah. again, you're just using a small amount, and it shouldn't have an adverse effect as long as you're just using fairly small amounts, yeah. uh, and it should be fine to use yeah. alongside the the regime. So, how do you feel about the uh, the zero drinks? Should they still be a, a treat, say once a yes, day? Yes, I think. Something? I mean, it's down to um, it's down to individual choice, but it's probably it's not a good idea. We need to drink plenty, yes. and ideally, we should be drinking water mm. um, with mm. elements like this as being treats. Really, yes. I mean, so incorporated daily, but not the base form of fluid that's drunk no. every day. And you've got such a huge variety of drinks available and sugar-free drinks available. Mm. And really they are, they do tend to be very, very low in carbohydrate. And that's not the issue particularly. Mm. Um, but, so some of them will have um, various sweeteners. Aspartame is a common sweetener used. Mm. And another one called acesulfame K, or some of them are sweetened with sucralose. And really, mm. so the way you choose your drink depends on which sweetener you want to go for. Yes. Um, and so it's it's useful just to read the back of the label and see what you've got in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And use them, I would still, I would tend to use them as, as a treat. Yes. I, d I wouldn't recommend that, th that, that anybody, whether it's a child or an adult, is consuming a lot of their fluid as artificially sweetened yeah. fruity drinks. Not necessarily because it's definitely going to cause some harm, mm. but that's not an ideal way of consuming your fluid. No. Right, Sue, so we've also got the uh, Hartley's uh, jelly crystals here. Yes. Now they're sugar free. Yes. And uh, we say that it's a free food. Yes. Um, yes. Very useful, we find, on its own, just to make a plain jelly uh, mm. as a treat and turn them into little sweets. And great for adding cream into to yes. get some fat in. Yes. Now, are they okay? Do you feel that? And they, I mean, yeah. I think they, they can be very, very useful. And again, mm. it's about um, it's about how you're delivering, you know, whether you need to use them all the time or just intermittently. Yes. And I think it's got to be really practical. If that's a, if that's the way uh, your child is going to 
manage to get the fats in because they have a creamy jelly after the meal mm. that's you know that's the way to do it yes, yeah. again what you might want to look at or what individuals might want to look at is what sweeteners are contained in those products mm. some individuals may want to choose a product with a different sweetener in them yes. there's not a massive range but for example the product we're showing here has got aspartame in as a sweetener but it is possible to look at supermarket owned labels that might have another sweetener in them yes. they might have sucralose in them for example yes. so you might want to shop around depending on what your personal preference is um, uh, then you might want to shop and look at different things but they can be really really useful and I think they have got a place and a part to play yeah. Um, so yeah they can be handy right well that's great so this looks like treats corner yes, yes. <laughs> occasional treats um, I hope that's answered uh, some of the questions that you wanted the answers to so thank you very much Sue that's fine you're welcome that's uh, interesting and although I work with some of these things um, it's nice to hear what you've got to say about it.